more weight on the back wheel equals less wheel spin. And how do you get more weight on the back wheel? Well, simple. Eat more ice cream. Ok, so that's not exactly the ice cream hack I had in mind. But nevertheless, it does give you a good excuse to eat more ice cream. Because once that pesky ice cream is removed, the tub itself makes a great budget bolt collection container to use in the garage when working on your bike. They're plenty big enough, work well to clean small parts in, and can stack together neatly when not in use. However, after all that sugary ice cream, it would probably be a good idea to brush your teeth with a brand new toothbrush to give your teeth a fighting chance. But don't be in a hurry to get rid of your old toothbrush. Just because a worn toothbrush doesn't do its best work on your pearly whites anymore, doesn't mean it won't be the perfect tool in the garage. Their short, stiff bristles and ergonomic design make them brilliant brushes to scrub bolt threads or clean out grease from tight places. And there's really no point in using a brand new toothbrush for those jobs. And to think you were just going to throw away a practically free garage edition. But make sure, whatever you do, do not mix the new and the old one up. This is a chin skirt. It stops the wind coming in the bottom of your helmet and freezing your nose or ruining your motorblock audio. Not all helmets come with them, but that's okay because it's very easy to create a makeshift one if that's what your life is missing. Grab a t-shirt you never wear, roughly trace the shape of your helmet's chin area onto a sheet of paper about an inch wider than the helmet and cut the stencil out. Then fold the shirt over and with the flat side of your stencil along the fold, cut around the stencil. With the untidy circle folded in half, use the handle of a teaspoon to slowly tuck the fabric into the gap on the chin, between the shell and the rubber padding, until it's symmetrical and taut. Now you can motor vlog to your heart's content with a little less wind noise. If you've seen my ridiculous GoPro mounts video, then you might know what this noise is. It's the sound of the Subtic 360. It has a tripod mount which I attached my GoPro to in an attempt to spice up my off the bike GoPro videos. It basically just spins, but the shots that it was able to get were pretty awesome. But the truth is that if you have a kitchen egg timer, like my manly ladybug over here, you could make your own spinning GoPro mount for a fraction of the cost. Simply slap an adhesive mount onto the top of the spinning timer and twist it to decide how far you want it to rotate. 15 minutes for every 90 degrees. Of course, you're stuck with traditional minutes rather than any duration you fancy. But with a bit of patience, you'll be left with incredible time lapses people haven't seen before. 
Plus, it notifies you when it's done. If there was ever a good time to wear a buff on a motorcycle, it's now. The colder weather is creeping in in the Northern Hemisphere, but the main reason is because of the strange times we're living in, where we're often required to wear one of these things, a mask. The biggest problem with them is that they're never where you need them, and I can't be the only one who always forgets to take one on a ride. Which is when the multi-purpose buff comes in extra handy. They make a pretty good mask, which is arguably more comfortable than the ones clinging onto your ears, and keep your nose warm and the wind out of your shirt along the way. They're also not the only part of your COVID survival kit that could come in handy. If you've removed a stubborn sticker and you're struggling to get rid of its sticky residue, isopropyl alcohol is the best tool for the job. Except that not many people have 99% alcohol lying around, unless you're a professional rapper that is. But we do all currently have hand sanitizer in every possible location, which is packed full of alcohol. So in a pinch, it does a pretty good job of persuading leftover sticker residue to evacuate your glorious paintwork. Everybody loves a good cable tie hack for some reason. So here's a good use for a cable tie that one of you guys commented. I recently suggested picking up a spring hook since they don't cost very much and they make getting into those hard to reach springs that pliers can't get into a lot easier. However, if you do find an urgent need for a spring hook with no time to waste on buying one, try tying a rugged zip tie around the hook of the spring. The tail of the cable tie should now be in a more suitable position for pliers to get into, to remove the spring without damaging it. Although it should be said that little cable ties are useless for this job. After all, zip ties cost next to nothing and when its job is complete, it can simply be snipped off with no signs of ever existing. Next, we need to tackle the sticky motorcycle switch situation because there's nothing worse than an indicator switch with zero tactile feedback. And spraying WD-40 through the window is just going to make things worse. The good news is that squishy feeling switches aren't permanent. A bit of cleaning can get them feeling 100% in just a few minutes. Loosening off the screws will allow you to split the casings to get them off of the handlebar and gain access to its inner workings. Where you can clean the gunk out of the mechanisms with some WD-40 and a detailing brush or cotton swab. Of course, adding some fancier grease to the mechanism will last longer, but less grime will instantly bring back the tactile feel that switches require. Nothing ruins a bike photo more than a helmet sitting awkwardly on the bike. But then comes the question of where do I put it down? Some say it's bad luck or tempting fate to put your helmet directly on the tarmac. And although I don't believe in that mumbo jumbo, I do believe in dirt. I've tried resting my helmet on my backpack, but it always ends up rolling out of my life the minute I look away. So placing your gloves, palms down, a few inches apart, provides a simple yet effective, level and stable surface to place your helmet down on that keeps it levitating just high enough above the ground to keep the dirt away from your head. Checking your chain slack usually only comes to mind right as you're ready to ride, when you don't really fancy getting your fingers greasy moments before they're going to be put into a glove. Well next time, since spanners should be close at hand near your bike, grab a 12mm and use the open end of the spanner 
to snugly grip your chain to give it the obligatory wiggle check. Your chain might be a different size spanner, and if it does need adjusting, you can't get away that easily. But it's a fairly foolproof way to keep the grease out of your gloves in a moment of desperation. But anyway, let me know which hack is your favorite. If you want to see more bike videos like this, subscribe and send it to a friend. Better yet, hit the like button and share some of your hack suggestions down in the comments. And I'll see you on the next ride.